What's up, Navigating Academia family? This is your buddy, Dr. J. Phoenix Singh, coming at you to be able to answer a valued viewer's question. You guys know that I love you, so do me a big favor before we get started here today and smash that thumbs up button, that like button. Make sure that this video, as well as all of the other videos here on Navigating Academia, gets disseminated by YouTube far and wide. If this is your first video that you're watching, I want you to know that you are warmly welcomed here in our community. Everybody here absolutely wants to help each other get further within academia, whether you're an early career professional all the way through a tenured late career academic, I want you to know that there's going to be content here on this channel for you. Now, if you have a question which I'm going to classify as a high sensitivity question, meaning that it's a question that you think that everybody, all, you know, well, we got like 4,000 or so subscribers at least at the time of making this video that we've got, if you think that you've got a question that could benefit everybody, please do put it down in the comments below. Or you can comment below to just say that you like the video, or that you think I look amazing in turtlenecks, because let's be honest, it's true. So let's go ahead and get started here, <laughs> Jesus, uh, by reading the comment that we've got, and uh, I'll go ahead and I'll answer the question, all right? So this is from, uh, first of all, Zainab, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you. Thank you for your comment. Here it is. Uh, hi, this is Zainab. I'm a, sorry, I make myself laugh. I'm a non-native English speaker, graduated in philosophy of religion as a PhD. Congratulations, mate, on getting the degree. That's a really big deal uh, for me. So I'm a Christian, and I have a lot of friends who are theologians, doctoral-level theologians, who graduated from Oxford around the same time as myself. So regardless of what your faith is and your background is, I think it's fantastic that that's what you got the doctorate in, man. Okay, I'm not only expanding my proficiency through this channel, but also leveling up my English abilities. That's awesome, mate. Congratulations. It, it takes a lot of work, you know, for me. So I'm conversationally fluent in German. I took German for seven years in school and then I lived in Germany. And I lived in Switzerland. There's nothing that you can do to be able to uh, communicate with other people better, more effectively. There's nothing better than you can do than learning other languages. So I think that that's tremendous. And obviously in academia, if you take a look at the circulation rates of different journals, the English language journals have overall in the aggregate the highest level of circulation. Now, I know firsthand from having lived in so many countries where English isn't the first language that sometimes it can feel like if you don't speak the dominant language of a country or of a field, sometimes it can be frustrating. It can feel like, uh, you know, you're, you're a little bit behind, as it were. Uh, but the fact that you're putting that effort in, mate, just deserves a lot of respect. So respect to you. Here we go. The contents you provide here are so unique and instructive. I'm a huge fan of the channel. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you for watching. All right. So. I have a question for you. Would it be any chance to be able to find a 100% online postdoctoral position in my major? So again, the degree that Zainab has is in philosophy of religion. Okay. So at the end of the day, mate, the big question is why do you want the postdoctoral fellowship? So usually, of course, you would want a postdoc directly after your doctorate and directly before your first whatever the lowest position of professor is in your given country. It could be a senior lecturer, it could be an assistant professor. Uh, there's so many names for the exact same thing, but the idea is that you know, you're starting at the bottom rung and then you're gonna be moving yourself up, right? So it makes complete sense that a postdoc is something you'd want to explore. Is a postdoc required to be able to get that first academic position? Very rarely, but as you'll see in other videos on this channel, and if you haven't made watch the other videos on this channel specifically about why you would want to do a postdoc, how to find a postdoc, and how to get one, make sure to watch those. Those are great videos. If you just kind of, you know, search for them within the channel, you'll find them pretty, pretty easily, okay? So, uh, that's my first big question is why do you want one? Because usually it's not required. So the reason why you could benefit from one, I would argue is kind of twofold. One is professional, one is personal. The professional reason you'd want to do it is if you need more stuff to be able to credential yourself before you go on the open job market. I'm talking about publications. So it could be journal articles. Obviously, because we're dealing with philosophy of religion, we could enter into things like non-edited books or edited academic books for one of the big five book publishers. Publishers. So the big five publishers who publish over 90% of all journals and academic books in the field are, and I'm, I always forget one, so let's let's see if I can get it. So it's El, Elsevier, some people say Elsevier, Springer, Rutledge, Wiley, and Sage. Oh yeah, all five. So that's the idea here, right? Essentially, if you can find a book contract opportunity, right, with one of those individuals, uh, individual publishers, 
you're kind of made in the shade, right? But if you don't have any publications, maybe that wasn't something you were focused on during your doctorate, or you've got all this content from your doctoral dissertation, and what you want to do is you need a little bit of time to be able to get your proverbial ducks in a row, get that stuff published, a postdoc is a great thing. So if you're in a field where you need grants and these things, which usually isn't the case in something like philosophy of religion, then it's also a good idea because you have a longer runway to be able to apply for early career professional grants, get some funding, start your lab, so on and so forth. Again, philosophy of religion, usually not the case. So the second thing that I want to say is that there's also a personal reason to do this. Uh, the doctorate is like an academic Mount Everest. Most likely it's the most difficult professional thing that you've ever done, especially if you just came out of undergrad and didn't work in between. So what happens is because of that, you're probably totally burnt out. Uh, and that would be completely understandable. Very few people are not completely burnt out when they're done. And to finish and then jump right into a tenure-track faculty position, uh, insanely stressful. So at the end of the day, having that time off, and postdocs usually are anywhere between like one year on the short end to all the way up to like five years, which is way too long. I would say maybe one and a half to three years ma max is what I would recommend. And just get out of it what you need to get out of it and then begin applying to tenure-track faculty positions. If you want to be an academic, that's, that's the idea there, right? Now, at the time that this is being filmed, which is at the end of 2020, it's the case that we're in the middle of this COVID pandemic. Uh, now, when you're watching this, it'll be five, ten years down the line, maybe, and in that case, it's certainly something where what I'm about to say may not be as relevant. Uh, but to answer this viewer's question, I do agree that in this day and age, especially right now, it may be possible to actually find uh, something that would be a completely online postdoctoral position for your degree program. Uh, and that would be wonderful if you could find something like that. But at the end of the day, remember that I do believe, especially when it comes to, to postdocs, that one of the biggest benefits is networking. So you are going to have to go out of your way to set up, you know, Zoom calls, Skype calls, WebEx calls, get the meetings that you want to have, network with the right people, uh, going to conferences. These days it'll be digitally. That's a lot less effective in terms of networking than going to a bar at some kind of a conference and having a cup of coffee with somebody. That is really what is effective here. Now, the thing that you would do, because again, this is something where even regular postdocs right now are probably effectively online-only postdocs, what you would want to do is to identify your target postdoctoral positions, which per usual is going to begin with you figuring out who would the postdoctoral supervisor be you would want to work with, identify that individual, find out whether or not their department actually has a postdoc opening or not, and if so, is that individual accepting postdoctoral mentees? And if so, then it's something where you can basically get to know that person a little bit and then actually formally apply. This is not something where like, you know, you've never had contact with anyone at that institution and then you apply for it. That's very, very rarely how these things work. That is definitely the exception and not the rule. Everything in academia is personal connections. Uh, straight up with you, I wish that that wasn't the case. It absolutely is. So it's really important that you get to know kind of as many people as you can to be able to have the connections you need, especially now that you're finished with graduate school, now that you're entering your career, it's going to be way more important to kind of get that networking down. But what I would do is work it backwards. Find the supervisor, identify the program, if the person is accepting students, then set up a call with them, an introductory call. You know, in the email you send, include your CV, include uh, different publications that you've already got. If you don't have publications but you've got, let's say, conference posters, include, you know, PDFs of those, include a copy of your dissertation because you're already finished. Try to get some information about how many individuals are going to be accepted, especially if it's online only. Maybe they're accepting more than usually. But again, it also depends if they're going to be paying you or not. So there's a lot of open questions here. Uh, if you want to chat more about it, obviously feel free to book a session with me. Website is down below where you can see my hourly fees as well as to be able to get in touch with me. So thank you guys so much for watching. As always, love y'all. If you have questions, put them down here. And uh, looking forward to hearing from you in the next one. See you guys soon. Bye-bye. Peace.